good morning boys and girls and welcome to our Sunday School lesson today. I'm excited that you tuned in again. Today we're going to start with a song called Trust and Obey and this song fits well with our lesson about following the Lord. So I have words again for us to follow and hopefully the melody is familiar to you as well. Let's try singing it together. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Let's take time now to pray to Jesus and to ask him to help us with this, that we would be able to trust and obey him in all that we do. Let's fold our hands, bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, we are grateful on this beautiful sunny morning that we can come to you in prayer and we can ask you for help. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are always willing to help us, that you want us to grow, that you want us to follow you, and that you're willing and, and able to help us to trust you, that you're willing and able to make, make us obey and to help us obey. Lord, we pray for those who are sick right now. We pray for those who are sad and lonely, those who are going through hard times. We pray that you would help us to have a really good day and that you would make us a blessing in our families, in our homes. We love you, Jesus. Amen. So this morning, our lesson is about growing. A few weeks ago, we heard about Easter, how Jesus came to earth and how he died for us and how he rose again. And last week, we talked about heaven, this beautiful place that we all want to go to, that because of Jesus' coming to earth, because of his death on the cross, because he rose again, we can go there. And when we come to Jesus, when we ask him to forgive our sins, he makes our heart pure, right? He forgives us, he gives us a clean heart, and then we're ready to go through life with him, following him. And he wants us to keep that heart clean and pure, but he also wants us to grow. Now, all of you are still growing, right? Maybe you've done this before too, where you've measured yourself against a wall. Have you ever been to the doctor and he, he weighs you and writes down how much you weigh and then he measures how tall you are and writes it down and then the next year when you come, he does it again. And he makes sure that those numbers are going up, that you're growing. And maybe at home you have one of these things on your wall where you measure. And I know our boys like to measure themselves and sometimes they don't like to wait long enough between measurements and then they haven't grown yet. But if we measure about once a month, that number just keeps going up every time and they're so excited to see how they grow. But just think about how sad it would be and how, how troubled your parents and your doctor would be if that number didn't go up. If you weren't growing, they would be worried because we're supposed to grow, right? Up until we hit our teen years at some point when we stop growing. But you know what? The children of God, when we become Jesus' children, when we become his followers, we actually never stop growing. There's no time um, during our life here on earth where we say, okay, I'm done growing. I've learned everything I'm going to learn. No, that's the wonderful part about being a child of God is that we can keep growing all the way through our entire life. We can keep growing. So we're gonna learn about what kind of things we can grow in, in, in our walk with Jesus, in following Jesus, and how we can grow. So first of all, how can we grow? Well, let's think about how do we grow physically? We need food, we need water, we need exercise. And similarly, we need spiritual food and exercise to grow spiritually. And one of the best ways to get spiritual food is to read the Bible. Here we see a picture of God's Word. So I know some of you might not be able to read yet, but your parents probably read the Bible for you and they tell you the stories in the Bible. If you can read, then you can ask your parents for a Bible. They have all kinds of wonderful Bibles, some that are more for younger children, some more for teenagers, but we want to be reading God's Word. And how, many, how often do you need to eat? Every day? Yeah! We need to read God's Word every single day. 
so that we can learn from it. And the wonderful part about God's word is that we can keep learning. Every time we read, there's something new for us. Even when you've been a Christian for years and years and years, when you read God's word, there's always something new. There's always more to learn. So it's the food that we need to take every single day. Now, another thing that we do is we go to church. Here's a picture of a church. Maybe your church doesn't look quite like that, but it's a place where we go to hear God's word, right? Our Sunday school teachers tell us the stories of the Bible and what they mean for us. And the pastor also explains God's word. You know, it's important to note that adults go to church too, right? Adults need to keep hearing about God's word too. They need to keep reading it every day, no matter how old they get. And they keep coming to church and hearing God's word because there's always more to learn. And this is the way that we grow by learning more about God from his word. Another thing that we need to do is pray. And prayer is one of these wonderful things because we can pray anytime. The Bible tells us that God never sleeps. So we have to go to bed because we get tired, but God doesn't get tired. He's always awake. He's always ready to listen when we pray. So that means we can pray in the morning when we wake up and we thank God that we're alive and that we're healthy. We pray before we eat and thank God that we have food and ask him to bless it to our bodies. We can pray when we're scared. Maybe at night we have a bad dream. We can pray. Or what about if we encounter something at school that makes us worried or sad or afraid? We can pray. We can always pray to God and he's always willing to listen. And he especially likes to listen when children come to him with full faith, believing that he can answer their prayers. And he so wants to answer your prayers too. Another way that we can grow is by giving. Here you can see this is an offering plate. And maybe you've seen this at your church. Some churches have a plate that looks like this. Others have like a little bag that they pass through. Some have a basket. But you've probably seen it go through the rows or maybe even in Sunday school, you have a tin where your money goes in the top. And these are an opportunity for us to give back to God. Remember, everything that we have, everything we have comes from God, right down to the clothes we're wearing, to the house that we're living in, to the food that we eat, to the nature that's around us. These are all gifts from God to us. And so God wants us to give something back to him. And he wants us to give back because we love him and because we want to show our love to him. And you know, he uses the money for different things. What does God use our money for? You might wonder. Well, when you go to church, you get to go to a nice building that's warm enough in the winter and cold enough in the summer. Those things have to be paid for. You also um, get to go to Sunday school where they have nice pictures like this. Or maybe you get to take a worksheet home. That has to be paid for. Our churches are clean. Somebody has to clean it. What about the pastor who preaches to us and tells us God's word? He needs to get paid. And then of course we know churches do so many mission things where there's poor people maybe who need um, another meal or maybe someone is sick and trying to pay their medical bill. These kind of things often get paid for by churches because we've given freely to the church. Or maybe there's a missionary that our church supports or they buy Bibles for people who don't have God's word. So there's all kinds of things that our money goes to when we give money to God's work. And it's really important to do this. God says he will bless us when we give with a cheerful heart. In fact, in the Old Testament, he says we can test him. We can test God and, and give God our best, our first. Even if we just get a little bit of money for our allowance or for a birthday, if we put it into the offering with a joyful heart, God promises to bless that. So that's one way we can also grow spiritually. Now, let's see what else we can do. God wants us to exercise, to practice our skills as we grow. And a lot of um, practice has to do with actually um, doing things, right? So with actions and with exercise and doing things again and again, doing the right thing, making good choices. And for this, we need God's help, right? From our own strength, we won't be able to make good choices all the time. But Jesus wants to help us to make good choices every single day. Now, there's different ways that we need to watch what comes into our hearts, into our lives, and different ways we can act out the right thing. So let's take a look at this picture here. 
This boy has eyes. We all have eyes. We need to be watchful about what we put into our minds with our eyes. What do we look at? What do we see? What about the videos that we watch or the books that we look at or the pictures that we see? Are we taking care of our eyes and making sure that they are seeing good things only and, and that we close our eyes and look away from bad things? Some good things to see would be like reading God's word. That's putting good things into our eyes, looking at good things. What about our lips? Our lips do a lot of speaking, right? We can be watchful with what we say. The Bible says we want to speak about lovely and beautiful and pure things, honest things, things that are true and good and honor God. And we don't want to speak about things that are not true. We don't want to lie or hurt somebody with our words. What about our ears? We have an opportunity to hear things all the time and it's a wonderful gift to be able to hear things. We wanna make sure what we're hearing is good. We wanna make sure that we're hearing things that honor God and that we're not listening to music or listening to um, shows that are not good. Or what about when kids are making fun of other kids? We don't wanna to listen to that. Or if they're telling jokes that are are rude and not honoring to God, we don't want to listen to that. We don't want our ears to hear those kinds of things. And so we need to practice walking away from that sort of a situation and not being a part of it so that our hearts stay pure. And then what about our hands? What do we do? Our hands do things all the time, right? What are our hands doing good for the Lord? How are we practicing good things? Are we helping others with our hands? Maybe we see someone fall down at school or drop their books. Do we bend down and pick them up and help them? What about at home when our moms or dads are working in the house? Do we help them and grab, use our hands to grab those toys that are laying around or to take the dishes off the table or to pick weeds outside? Are we helping with our hands? Are we using them for good? What about our feet? Our feet take us places, right? We want to go places that honor God and stay away from those kind of places that take us away from him. So these are all different ways that God wants us to grow. And you know, even as a child, as a young person like you are, you can honor God with the things that you do. Do you remember the Bible story where a little boy came to Jesus and brought him what he had in his hands? What did he have? Do you remember? Jesus was with a big group of people and they had a big problem. They didn't have enough food for all this crowd of people who were watching and listening to Jesus. And one little boy brought Jesus what he had. He took his feet and he walked to Jesus. He, in his hands, held out his lunch that his mom had packed for him, and he brought it to Jesus. And because he did that, Jesus was able to do a wonderful miracle. So you're never too small to honor God with what you do, and you're never too small to use your hands and feet to be a blessing for him. And that's what we wanna be. We wanna bring glory and honor to Jesus every day and to keep growing every day of our life. That's my prayer for all of us. I wish you a good day.